Thursday, that's tomorrow, the All-Star Reserves will be revealed on TNT during the pregame show. Then you'll see the Bucks and Raptors. That's a good one at 8 Eastern time. Followed by the 76ers as they continue their Western Conference road trip, taking on the champs in Oakland. The Warriors have won 11 in a row. Tonight, it's Luka Doncic and the Mavericks in New York. Earlier today, Dirk Nowitzki talked about coaching Luka in the Rising Stars game and his advice for the rookie tonight at MSG. Yeah, I told him, you know, he's got to play hard, or he's gonna, I gotta sub him out. You know, it's, uh, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be tough on him. I want to teach him a lesson, and uh, no, he's been, he's been obviously tremendous for us. He's been uh, an amazing find. Uh, I think he, he uh, exceeded all of our expectations, and he deserves to be in that game. He even had a shot to be in the real All Star game, and he still has, I guess. Once, once they uh, announce the reserves, we'll see. But he's been, uh, for a 19-year-old, his court vision, his, his play has been amazing, and uh, we're happy to have him. For Luca and Brunson and a couple others just do their first game here, is there anything you would impart to them about kind of a heads up? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of want to stay in the moment, you know. You don't want to get carried uh, carried away by, by the magnitude of the situation here. And, uh, I mean, sometimes it's easier said than done. And, Whatever you see, some celebs in the front row, but you know you, you just gotta stay focused. And once you get subbed in, and, and, and um, just focus on on your defensive coverage, focus on the next play on offense, and, and just stay really stay in the moment and enjoy it. Luke has played in a lot of high pressure situations in his young basketball life at the age of 19, Euro Euroleague championship games, that sort of thing. This will be a different experience for him tonight at Madison Square Garden. What advice would you guys give him? Uh, based on your own memories of walking onto that floor in front of that crowd the first time. You know, and, and the Knicks are not the Knicks as back in the past, but I will say is that mystique of walking in there as a professional basketball player, getting to play in front of that crowd, usually the great ones have magical games in Madison Square Garden. And I think for him is, is somewhat you got to play well, you want to win, but you also have to put on a show in New York. And if you can do that, it seems like that's your measuring stick of one of those regular season games when you play against the Knicks in New York, G. And so I'm looking forward to him to have one of those special nights. Yes, Steve, I, I think so too. And obviously we know Luca is a, is a great student of the game, grew up overseas, so may have a different relationship and understanding of Madison Square Garden. But you know this, I mean, there, there's an electricity in that building. Mm -hmm. And you walk in there for a game, the fans are so knowledgeable, the music, the energy, everything about it is just prime time. And you feel it. And you know, look, he, he more than any rookie, I would say, is probably ready because the, the responsibility he had in the Euro League, which is, a, mm -hmm. I believe, a tougher league than, than college basketball, the yeah. stage he yeah. was on, how he responded. So he is suited for a special moment. And you know what? This kid has had a lot of them already thus far at home and on the road. So one thing I'd say, and I, it took me a few years, a few games, I think, to figure it out. I would get so excited when I would first go to New York that – you know, sometimes it worked against me. So I had to learn how to just stay within myself and, and, and then get excited throughout the course of the game. Not, you know, not go out there for two hours and shoot before the game, right. which I did one time. I had no <laughs> legs for the game. Um, but, you know, there's, there's an energy there that's just hard to describe. You really just have to feel it, and he'll definitely feel it. You know it. what I love about Matt and Grant? You may can attest to this. The conversations you have walking around New York before you play, just the fans are coming right, up right. to you and, how are you going to guard John Starks? What are you going to do? Are you going to post it? They're so knowledgeable. You can't get caught up in talking to everybody about the right. Nick basketball. So it's going to be interesting to see how he handles this, and I'm looking forward to this from Luca. By the way, Pete Maravich has the rookie scoring record at Madison Square Garden, 40 back in the 70-71 season. That's something mm. to shoot for for Luka Doncic, who's scored better than 30 in two straight games now. He also has a chance at this point to become the fifth rookie in NBA history to average 25 and 5 for a season. Is he an all-star in the Western Conference, or should he be? You know, he has all-star numbers. And I, and I think right now the Western Conference is just loaded. I, I, I think he gets a chance if we unfortunately have some injuries, and I think he's right there on that next cup of being an all-star. But what I'm seeing is, if those numbers right, we're in the East, he would be an all-star right now. It's just unfortunately. I don't think, in my opinion, that he would be an all-star this season. You know, I, I agree with you, Smitty. The, the West is loaded. Uh, this kid is just, you know, is just remarkable what he's done. 
He has a promising future. There's a chance, you know, possibly we, you know, the last few years there's guys who get injured. You know, you know Anthony Davis, we don't know how long it's going to take for him mm -hmm. to get back. Um, you know, it, inevitably sometimes guys will sit down to replacements. But um, the, the kid is, I mean, what he has done, how he has played. I think everyone said that he was the most ready because mm -hmm. of his experience. But I think he's exceeded uh, everyone's expectations and how uh, his confidence, like you just feel like the momentum, the confidence he's gained. Uh, and so this 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 kid, he'll, he'll be an all-star, whether it's this year, next year, years to come. Uh, definitely a guy who has a chance to be a perennial all-star throughout this league. Somebody always gets hurt and can't play in the mm -hmm. game. I Usually. think he will not make the cut tomorrow. I think he'll be the first guy called in when there's an injury in the Western Conference. It's fair. It's fair. It could be. And also factoring in all the votes he received. I think that's, that's mm -hmm. something for Adam Silver to consider as well. Um, the Dennis Smith situation in Dallas. You know, they drafted him with, with a high pick thinking that he's part of their future. They draft Doncic the following year. They may or may not be all that compatible together. Both probably need the ball in their hands. So you had Dennis Smith leaving the team for a little while and then returning. Um, Rick Carlisle has said, you know, they've worked it out and he wants to continue coaching him. Is he long for this team? Do they make sense together? You know, Matt, you do bring up a good point, and, and obviously it feels like he's digressed this year after a, a really good first year, rookie year in the league. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that, that is accustomed to having the ball in his hands, and he's done that his whole career, did it his rookie season. And now you bring in this guy, Luca, who has a special skill set. Uh, and I love how Carlisle has used Luca, putting him at, on the three-man, four position, going small, embracing small ball. But his decision making, uh, his ability to close games with his shooting, uh, and his you know off the dribble. Uh, so he has sort of become, you know, maybe I don't want to say point forward, or maybe like Larry mm -hmm. Bird, or someone who I think of, or even LeBron, who's you know a guy who's a, a three or four, but the the ball is or the game is run through him, mm -hmm. and that's hurt Dennis Smith. And so Dennis Smith, his game is not shooting. His game is athleticism, taking you off the bounce. Now you're asking him to be a spot-up shooter. His shot is not consistent enough to me to compliment a Luka Doncic. So, you know, th there's some uncertainty there. Uh, he's still a young player. He's got a lot of uh, basketball in front of him. If they ever decide to try to move him, I think there be, might be some suitors out there that would, be, would certainly welcome him in his skill set. But it just doesn't seem to be working. In a perfect world, they both would be thriving playing great basketball, and that's just not happening. Yeah, and I look at it, it's, it's, it's funny. I look at it when LeBron, uh, and, you know, com joined forces with D-Wade, and we kept saying, is this going to work? Right. Wade, Wade won't have the basketball in his head, but he had experience, and right. they were looking to win a championship. I think for Dennis Smith, if they were older, it could work. He would find a way, but I think he hasn't found his way in the league being just a second-year player, and then obviously you're that guy. And they say, oh, let me have that ball back. You can't play with the ball anymore. Right. I think that's totally hard on a young guy. And he's done a decent job. I know they've had some hiccups, like you said. But I, I think Dennis Smith wants to see, can I be Luka? I haven't got a chance to see if I can be Luka. Luka just came in from day one being Luka, and it's just been hard for Dennis Smith Jr. I think they could, but I think it'll be better for both the Dallas Mavericks and Dennis Smith Jr. if they can make a trade. Smith's shooting numbers have actually gone mm -hmm. up this season. Mm -hmm. It's the, the attempts and almost everything else that have come down in his second year in the league. Dwayne Wade, by the way, was one of the great off-the-ball cutters but in that era. That also helps playing with a guy who's ball dominant. Uh, back to Luka. He'll be part of the Rising Stars game Friday night at All-Star Weekend, representing Slovenia for the world. And he'll be joined Ooh. by Laurie Markkinen, DeAndre Ayton from the Bahamas, Ben Simmons, remember, from Australia. Folks forget that because he played at LSU. Bogdan Bogdanovich, the reigning MVP of this game. As always, know your Bogdanovi. Josh Okoge, Jetty Osman, who had a big night last night scoring. Shea Gilgis Alexander from the LA Clippers. Rodion's Kuruks. Got to gotta get your pronunciation. Good job, man. Hey, Ready man for this nailed game. that one. Better you than me. Anunobi, um, he went to high school in, in Jefferson City, Missouri, my home state, but was born in the UK. Wow. And for the U.S., De'Aaron Fox will be there. Jason Tatum, that's a pretty good Rising Stars player right there, Jason, Jason Tatum. Uh, same for Kyle Kuzma. The rookie, Trey Young. Uh -huh. Donovan Mitchell will fall into that category as yes. well. You're talking about legitimate star players. Did you just do the... No, I don't you know. Did you, you did, did the it. thing. I don't know where that... Well, one more time, he's going to have to do it then. Man. Jaron Jackson Jr., Marvin Bagley the third, John oh. Collins. There it is. John Collins. <laughs>
Smitty, man, come on, man. You crazy, and dog. Lonzo crazy. Ball. You also got to get you some hot water. And Jared <laughs> Allen. <coughs> Guess what? Hey, John Collins, oh. my most improved player. You know what? Here's, here's... Uh, I had Siakam, not because Grant's there. Oh, I had Pascal Siakam. He's moved to the top of my list. I probably have Siakam, and I have a, a, an admitted bias against second-year players only because I feel like they're supposed to improve a lot from year one to year two. Does that make sense? God, they're supposed to? Yeah, you're supposed to. It doesn't always happen. It doesn't, it doesn't always happen, happen but you're the, supposed to. And, but, but, that, but that drastically but there's changed. A lot yeah, of, there impressive. are a lot of players who get significantly better from year one to year two. So this I almost, I, I wouldn't rule them out. What year is this with Pascal Siakam? Second year, right? No, he's beyond that, isn't he? Third year, yeah. So he should have been drastically improved by now. <laughs> <laughs> if he's a fourth year, wow. He should what have does been, it just work exponentially like that? <laughs> you said first and second. What about first and fourth? He should be an MVP year? now. He should be an MVP <laughs> right now, man. Come on. All right. <laughs> anyway, John Collins has been great, by the way. Yes, no, yes. Not knocking oh. John Collins. Coming up, we continue to construct a perfect player tonight. The category is jump shot. Smitty, not eligible. Steph Curry is. <laughs>